room says the opposite of nocturnal. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> So good to see you guys. This film is fantastic. Now you guys have spoken about here, both fans of Chevy Chase's Fletch. There's this new generation of viewers who will be viewing your version of it, which I think is very exciting. What do you hope that they take away from it and they enjoy about it? I hope they like it enough to want a, want a sequel. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, I think, you know, we were very cognizant that, that the original film is, you know, over 30 some odd years old. And uh, that this would be introducing this character to a, to a new generation. So we wanted to make it its own thing. We didn't want to make it completely reductive and, and uh, an imitation of what Chevy did in the, in the film from the 80s. And we wanted that not only from a character standpoint and from, from how I, I performed the, uh, the character, but, uh, but we also wanted to make it a tonally different film. So we, instead of it being very 80s and very synthesizer-y and voiceover-y and all of those things, it, we, we changed the tone to much more of a subdued kind of laid back uh, method of storytelling that's honestly much, much closer to the tone of, of the books. And, and Greg and I being both big fans of of, uh, of detective movies and especially movies from the 70s, which is when the original um, story takes place, although we, we brought it into the, the, the present day, uh, we knew we could kind of, kind of make uh, some cool decisions uh, in, in, in going down that path. Absolutely, that really, really shows in that. Um, Greg, you said that writing mysteries, um, theoretically, lets you get away with murder. Um, that's, first of all, an amazing quote. How did this manifest itself into this particular project? Um, well, I think that, I think what's appealing about murder mysteries is that they have an ending and there's something solved. And I think what, you know, one thing about why Fletch now, I feel like there's a, a generation of people your age who are probably very frustrated that things don't seem to get done. Um, there are people seem to be getting away with crimes. There's, there's things in the society, there's injustices happening all the time that don't seem to change. And I think Fletch is one of those people who doesn't entirely respect authority, is probably frustrated with how the justice system works and just takes it into his own hands. And he doesn't mind telling some lies or running a scam or possibly breaking a few smaller laws to, to make things right. Um, and I think that there's something really enjoyable about that. And I think the, the, the wish fulfillment of why can't we do that in the world more, uh, hopefully will speak to people your age. Speaking for myself, it absolutely did. It's interesting to watch and it's even more interesting to think about after the fact. Now, John, as we were talking about before, you had a lot of material to go on when adapting this character, but you really made him your own and you sort of changed the narrative. Was there a process to that? Did you find in adapting this character? And what was that like? Mostly, it was uh, it was really uh, revisiting the books that I uh, that I had read the first time uh, uh, I was introduced to them from watching the, the the original film, and then realized, oh my gosh, there's ten or eleven more books and stories uh, with this character. And then once I got into the books, I realized, oh my goodness, they they really don't tonally have had much of anything to do with with the original iteration of the film. So I was I was pleased. I thought this this character has a lot of potential for a new interpretation uh and i was i had a pretty solid idea on on what i wanted to do i think you know greg and i came to the came to the same conclusion of you know he might not always be right but he's often if not always on the side of right and so he he tends to get to those um his conclusions may not always uh, add up but he he's definitely he never punches down and he and he and he's always uh, got uh, and he's not a he's not necessarily in it for himself either, which is a very uh, strange uh, world to be in, and in, in when we're surrounded by sort of the the cult of narcissism that we live in these days. So I think that it's um, he's there to help in a lot of great ways, and and we were able to kind of pull all of those various threads together and and make and make this movie I think a very consistent uh, character at the center of it. Do you guys play Angela and Eve in this only installment of Fletch? To start us off, tell me a little bit about your characters and what viewers can expect to see from them on screen. Ooh. So okay. you go. <laughs> yeah. So I play I play Angela. She is a an Italian from Rome. She's an heiress and the daughter of a of a very wealthy Italian count man situation. And she 
um, is a larger than life being who is uh, quite free in her the way that she experiences life and has a very loud and full of energy personality. And I, I hope you will enjoy some of her zingers. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I play Eve. Um, she plays Fletch's neighbor at the place where he's staying. And um, she is a bit of a tornado. Um, kind of a chaotic person, um, who, um, I don't know how much I can say, spoilers, um, but no, she's just, um, kind of a, kind of a free spirit that he comes, encounters on his journey to solve the crime. Um, it was lovely, tornado, chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Now, as you were saying, this film is larger than life, as your characters are. What was your experience like filming it? Was it enjoyable? Because it looked very enjoyable. <laughs> I well, was just it during COVID. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, Lorenza, you start. Yeah, I, sorry, I'll start. Yeah, you tell me. <laughs> no, no. Um, uh i i really enjoyed it i had never lived in boston we shot a big chunk of it in boston and and some pieces in italy of course italy was a dream come true i will shoot there whenever always um but living in boston was really fun i hadn't done that yet and i got to like experience boston in the summer it gets quite hot um but we had i mean it's it's incredibly fun when you get a group of of ca of a cast like we did i think having Roy and Lucy and Marsha and Annie come in and do their thing and Aiden Mieri, like there was, whenever it was the whole cast, there was something really cool happening, especially that dinner scene because we were all there together. John is incredible to work with because he just has a that shock element of his natural dry humor that you never know where it's going to go. And then when we added all the pieces and we were all together seeing that dynamic, I was laughing between takes. So I, I had a blast. Yeah, it was so much fun. Uh, it was my first time to Boston, and uh, I was um, yeah, it was very hot. Um, but just the whole group, you know, kind of like sometimes just a tone is set from the top down, and um, this one had a great uh, group of people and just a great vibe, and it was so much fun. And the yeah, it was, uh, really um, ideal to be able to play with so many people and different um characters and like everybody was so good and um so it was it was a it was a really fun hi my name is sydney Harker, sydney. I'm with the nocturnal it's so good to see you guys how are you good sydney like that is room. one of the most amazing room setups i've ever seen <laughs> i love i want to go have a sleepover at your house come over so come on yeah. i'm in manhattan come over right now <laughs> nicely done you're welcome nicely done. anytime you guys play grizz and detective monroe tell me a bit about your characters and what viewers can expect to see from them on screen well my character is trying really hard to prove herself specifically to roy i just want his approval most of the movie but i have a good heart and i think <laughs> i'm pretty good at my job i think i proved that okay <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do yeah you know you know our job is the same as any other homicide detective in this country which is to follow the facts and let that dictate who you arrest as you attempt to solve a murder what is not like other homicide detectives in this country is to have a charismatic but annoying investigative journalist True. being one step ahead of you every damn step of the way and you can't get mad at him because he's charming but also some of the facts and clues that you're investigating are pointing at him and so it's it's the idea of who do we listen to john ham's charm or the evidence in front of us and as cops that's kind of that's the that's the choice we're constantly faced with uh throughout the film mm. I'm sure most cops can relate to that. John Ham's charm or the evidence. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's all that's yeah, yeah, absolutely. in any job, really. Like, you know, John Ham <laughs> here, the, the task at hand. It's so in funny way, there are a decent amount of conversations in this film that sort of relate back to real life and things that are going on in the world right now. What do you both hope that viewers can take away from this film within being entertained and just, you know, leaving and having some thought on it? What do you hope they can take away? Mm -hmm. I think that. I think that viewers can take away, you know, just for an hour and a half to just come and unplug from life. And I think that's what that's what all comedy is about. You know, all comedy, regardless of the tone of it, the goal of the objective 
of someone trying to make you laugh is to give you an opportunity to escape whatever it is that's stressing you out. And I think that this film is exactly that. I hope that no one's inspired to go and steal art <laughs> after watching this film. <laughs> but, it, you know, but it's, it's, it's definitely just, it's just a good ride, you know, because Fletch is a guy that operates in a world where everybody is serious, but for him, everything is not that serious. And I think that's an important way that we can all look at how we carry ourselves in the real world. I love it. Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, I think also, even if you're talking about heavy things, the best way to have a conversation about it is through making people laugh. So it's just a nice way to bring people together and to let people have a little bit of fun and a little bit of an escape and not take ourselves too seriously. You guys are all such lovely people and you have such a fun dynamic to you. What was the dynamic like on set? Because it sounds really fun. <laughs> it was really fun. I mean, Greg Matola is very collaborative and really wanted us to play around and try stuff. And John's so funny and collaborative and obviously Roy's so fun. So we just were all like, I don't know. It just was, it, it <laughs> felt like more fun than it should be for a job, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it it definitely was a chill it was very like it was almost because we're playing you know our job is to play a little bit more straight to John Ham's a little bit more you know quirky and you know I, I hate the word zany because it, it wasn't that but our job is to be a little bit more muted than John but then when the cameras cut we could be a little bit more up. And so, you know, that part of it, you know, was cool. But, you know, it just, it depended on the night. You know, I'll be honest, you know, movie making is fun, but just being up at three in the morning, you up at three in the morning, three in the morning is never. It's hard. Like, how many great stories do you have in your life from three in the morning? Like, they just, it's just not a, it's not a hit time slot. It also is switching <laughs> hours. That's when weird, weird stuff happens, switching oh, hours. Exactly. Now, what's your favorite thing about this film? There's a lot going on. It's so exciting. It's a lot of fun. What do you like about it? Um, I like the vibe that they created. It's charming. It's funny. It's, um, it's you know, kind of thumbs its nose at authority in a kind of a in a in a nonviolent way. I don't know. I think it's a I think it's a good movie for these times when everybody's so angry. It seems like everybody, I think this is something that people will enjoy and, um, and it, uh, it's funny and it's, it's, it's just a good time. I totally agree. You said you were a fan of the original Fletch. What did you like about it? Well, I mean, it's hard not to like Chevy. He had such a specific sort of insane, um, I don't know, MO in this, in this, in the original movie. Um, kind of leaving everybody scratching their heads, you know, in, in, in his wake. Um, and I think this movie does the same thing in, in its own original way. I, I think they were smart enough not to, you know, try to recreate anything specific in that way. Um, yeah, you know, Chevy was an all-star, is. Your character has so many really good lines. I was wondering if you had a favorite. Favorite line? Um, I think uh, go fuck yourself, I think was probably my favorite line. Which is usually- I love it. <laughs> what about this project did you find challenging or difficult? Were there any hurdles throughout the filming process? Uh, no, there was nothing really too challenging. I mean, showing up for a couple of days to do a few scenes with your friend in a, in a movie directed by Greg Matola is, um, is not exactly heavy lifting, you know, it was fun. And it was, I grew up in Boston. So it was fun to go back and, you know, hang out there. And uh, yeah, no, it was, it was all good. A line that Greg said that I really like is he said that um, with creating mysteries like this sort of theoretically lets you get away with murder because you can play around with these different narratives. Did you find that in this film? Did you find anything that was really fun about creating it? I mean, I'm, I play such a sort of specifically small part in the in the whole. Uh, I just I admire the way they, you know, it, it, letting the audience know what they need to know, without it feeling like a, you know, a, a film class, um, in a movie like this is is difficult. It's a lot of story, 
It's a lot of plot. But Greg's such a good writer and director and and Ham is so, you know, effortlessly funny and charming that, uh, you know, they make it look really easy and it isn't. I love it. What about this film are you most excited for viewers to see? Are there any specific scenes that you're really excited about? Well, the ones I'm in, I'm excited for them to see that. Um, I think uh, it's, I think I'm, I'm, you know, excited as people to see a different side of John Hamm. I mean, that character he played on Mad Men is so iconic. And I think you, when, when you have something like that, you spend the next few years or projects kind of trying to live it down, you know? And I, I think he's managed to do that over the years and create a really great body of work. You've frozen, Sydney. Oh, there you are. 